Hello and welcome to Political Forum. Today, Wednesday, March 5th, 2014. We're here today with our guest, Alderman Bob Ferretti of the Second Ward. Thank you for appearing on our show tonight. Thank, thank you. you very much. Good to be here. I'd like to also thank you as uh, being the Alderman for CAN TV thank for several you. years. Uh, you are the Alderman in the Second Ward, and I know that pretty soon there's going to be a new map, or there is a new map. And things will be happening, changing, so I don't know, you, are you going to still be the alderman? or? Well, I don't know where I'm going to run. Uh, the ROM remap gave me a lot of opportunities to run in several wards, including the 2nd Ward, the 3rd Ward, 4th Ward, 25th Ward, 27th Ward, 28th Ward, 43rd Ward, or whatever fate and uh, may bring to me. Um, and I should say... Today was a council day, so uh, it's not only just a, a regular day in the, in the life of the city of Chicago, uh, but more importantly, uh, I, I heard today from uh, lawyers on the remap suit that uh, on, I believe, April 6th or 7th, there will be oral arguments in the Seventh Circuit on the uh, remap case. Oh, so who knows where that will all lend itself. Wow. Well, thank you for that update. Uh, my name is Freddy Calixto, and I'm a board member here at CAN TV. And this is an interactive program, so please call the number at the bottom of, the, of your screen uh, to, if you have a question for the alderman. Uh, we're going to just get into some conversations about the second ward. And as you heard already, uh, there's some interesting things happening already uh, with the map of, of the ward and the new map coming up. And I want to show you just the current map. And as you, this is the second ward as it is today. And this is the information for the ward office and the phone number. You, you have the uh, email and also the website if you want to contact the alderman's office. And here is a, a snapshot. And you thought the last one was bad. Look at this map. <laughs> this is the new one. Unbelievable. Yes. Unbelievable. It's a little confusing to see the map because it's kind of small. But the, you can tell there's a big difference. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Alderman, can you please uh, give us a little update on what things are happening in the second ward? Well, uh, luckily um, and fortunately, I represent both wards, and I try to do it as best as we can with the limited staff that we have. Uh, they haven't given us an additional staff to represent the second ward. Uh, we do. Uh, we oversee in the uh, new second ward all the zoning, but in the original second ward I have to de deal with uh, bad businesses uh, or businesses to make sure they're in conformance outdoor cafes picking up garbage snow removal uh, you name it the host of problems that ascend into an alderman's office here in the city of Chicago uh, at the, in the new second ward I do the same things too and my staff tries to address the issues but we really have uh, no authority up there in a sense except for the zoning authority uh, we try to do what we can. Uh, we work uh, in a cooperation with the people up there, with the businesses up there, uh, with the police up there, the police districts, uh, to make sure that we try to improve the quality of life. I think that's what the main goal of an alderman should be, is improving the quality of life of not just the people in his ward, but his or her ward, but all Chicagoans. Awesome. Great. Thank you. I, I was looking at uh, your website, and there were some interesting uh, uh, activities that you have done throughout the years, uh, something like the Adopt-A-Family. How long has that been going on? Uh, we've had that going on a couple of years, uh, and we usually do it around Christmas time, and we do it in conjunction with uh, uh, BOMA, which is a, a buildings uh, uh, management uh, association. Uh, we have uh, they donate toys, other items for the uh, needy families. And we obtain our families from churches who uh, believe that, and they vetted them on, on people and families that just don't have the resources to make a good Christmas. Uh, we did that this year. We've done it, and it was, you know, what's great about it is to see the families come in, uh, sometimes with their, with usually with their mother or grandmother, and the little kids know what's happening, and they think it's uh, Christmas that day, uh, and their faces, and to see their faces, and you know, it, it drives home uh, a situation that we have here in this city about how the divide that we have, that the people that that need help, that need assistance. I mean, if I take a look at the Chicago public schools, we have over eighteen thousand children in our Chicago public schools that are homeless. Uh, 
and it makes, I mean, where do you go to study then? Wow. Uh, how do you read at night? What do you do? I mean, a lot of kids get into trouble that way because they don't have the they don't have a, a home to go to every night. They're they're moving. They're in transition. They're going from one house to another. Uh, you know, we we face enormous problems in this city, but with people together, people working together, we can solve uh, those problems. Wow. Well, that's I uh, seems like a very interesting event. Uh, how many families do you think? Yeah. Um, we've done anywhere from, and it, and it is difficult to service them, uh, from 60 to 100 is our usual basis. And we have things that, throughout the course of the year that we help those families too, or other families. Great, great. Uh, I also noticed a job fair. You, you do job fairs for the community residents? Uh, when I say we do job fairs, the answer is yes. I'm a big believer in job fairs. My staff is too. Uh, and we, when I say... Uh, we, we invite entities to come there, uh, but you have to have jobs. You have to be willing to give jobs. You're not there to advertise for your country and beat your chest and say, oh, we're, we're, look at how good our company is, uh, but you, can, you have to go on our website. Uh, la in the last few months, we had um, not only did we have a job fair for all community, uh, for people in the community, there was a job fair recently at Pete's uh, Produce, up at, which were which we work to bring to our community at Western and Madison. But we had a veterans uh, job fair. Uh, and I ju just recently got a number from the um, uh, governor's office that we had uh, 132 or 136 people uh, obtained employment through awesome. that job fair. Great. Great. Yes. Well, this is a call-in show. Uh, please call the number at the bottom of your screen. And we have a caller. Caller, what is your question? Hi, Alderman. Um, I'm actually going to be in your new ward. And uh, I was just looking at that map, and that's pretty crazy. Um, but I was just wondering, like, what's the alternative? You know, how, how could people draw ward maps that are... Because then there's a lot of interest, right? There's, like, ethnic interests, and there's neighborhood interests. So what's a better way to sort of strike that balance? Well, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a ballot initiative, or people are trying to put a ballot, a ba a ballot initiative in on November. Um, uh, about taking away politics and putting it in the hands of experts. I think uh, that map could have been, Scott Wagesbeck and I uh, designed a couple of different maps that could have served uh, many of the communities under 50, uh, uh, keeping 50 wards, or we created a map that had 35 wards. Uh, but of course, you know how the aldermen are. Uh, they maintain their own interests, their pension interests, their payroll interests, and not the people's interests. Uh, that one got shot down pretty quickly. Uh, but the 35 ward map that we we have proposed uh, would have kept communities intact. Uh, as you see, that map uh, has five or six different communities. Uh, and, well, that's the um, uh, that is the that is the map and uh, as we look at it I've got to look at it from afar over there but uh, it cuts in from Ukrainian Village, Wicker Park, Lincoln Park, uh, Streeterville, the Gold Coast, uh, uh, a lot of communities just there. So. Well thank you for that question caller. The uh, job fair that you talked about uh, you had the one in November and you had a veterans fair a uh, veterans Job fair, that was the one in November? Uh, they were both almost simultaneously okay. back to and back. You so. have another one coming up. And we will be having one. We're just starting to get it underway, uh, tr trying to find a location, uh, trying to find, as they call, vendors. Uh, I, I have to reach out and thank many of the people that have hired uh, continuously uh, from people. Uh, uh, folks in, in, in and around not just the second ward but throughout the city of Chicago at our job fairs. Awesome. Great. We'll look forward to that. Another exciting event that you do at your job, at, I'm sorry, at your, at your ward is a bike, annual bike. Uh, what's, what is it, annual bike-a-thon? It's, it's, uh, it's an annual bike, um, uh, bike the ward. Bike the ward, uh, okay. The fir uh, until last year, we always stayed in the um, uh, old second ward, and we made it all the historic sites. And the old second ward has an immense number of olds uh, from... Uh, the Camp Douglas, where it was a camp during the Civil War, uh, 6,000 Confederate soldiers died there during the uh, being incarcerated, believe it or not. We go past that location to uh, Soldier Field, McCormick Place, uh, a, a number of uh, 
but we're Mrs. O'Leary, remember her? She had a cow. We go past her location uh, where the Cubs won the last World Series, which is not wow. too far from here, as a matter of fact. You're kidding. Um, you have a lot of history there. So, yeah, I think it was in 1908, the last time they won the World Series. They were the, here on the uh, west o side. O'Leary's cow must have been there. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> all of those. and um, uh, But this year we combined it. Uh, and we had it between the old along the lakefront. We started only a couple blocks over here, uh, and we went through both wards, and it was a great experience. And everybody has fun. It, uh, this year we had it on a Sunday. It was a family event, and uh, uh, I like to see everybody biking and staying healthy that way. Awesome! That sounds like a great. I wish we could have that kind of weather till we could all be biking. Well, that's today. the problem that yeah. we're having yeah. here in Chicago right now. And so uh, the snow falls, or uh, the snow is just not enough to fill the potholes. So, um, and we are struck with a lot of potholes throughout it. And my staff has been going around trying to report them all. Uh, I urge people to call 311 when they see a pothole. Potholes just don't get fixed by themselves. And, and we, need, we need the public's help uh, to, to fill a pothole. Uh, we need the public's help um, on a street light out. You call 311. Uh, we need those, sir, you need to address the services right away. And if there's something, uh, not uh, a police emergency, but it's still an emergency, like we were addressing somebody who had their water out for the last couple of days. He called, uh, they called somebody last night. We got on it last night. We had the water department deal with uh, trying to restore the water because of frozen pipes. And it's a very dangerous time out there. We can make light of what the weather is, but uh, we need to address those issues right away. Good, good points. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Moody's this week uh, downgraded the city's credit rating due to the uh, pension crisis and the city's amount of debt. So my question is, what does that mean uh, to the city? And also, what does that mean uh, to me as, as a city taxpayer? Well, first of all, before you end it, uh, are you a um, uh, homeowner? Is he still on the line? Oh, yes, I am. Are you a homeowner? Uh, n no, I'm not. Okay. Well, you know, when you say the pension crisis, uh, I, I'm going to say that it's been a manufactured crisis by our government. Uh, the failure to make uh, every, every twice a month city employees, especially our police and fire, who are operating without a contract under the old contract, that, um, uh, are there for us. They're, they're first responders. Um, and uh, twice a month, they make their pension contributions as all uh, municipal employees do. And the city did not make its uh, comparable based upon a several factors contribution. Uh, for about 10 years, all those led to a problem. Uh, I also believe the use of TIFs have led to this problem, and we need uh, strong TIF reform. And when you take a half a uh, billion dollars away from the tax base, that leads to this, a part of this problem. Now, I say this, um, Moody's downgrading is uh, not to be taken lightly. And I said that earlier today, and I'm concerned about it. But what, what happened today in city council, we don't talk about pensions. We don't talk about how we're going to remedy this situation. We talk about other issues uh, that impact uh, locally on the aldermen. We need a strong city council to talk to the mayor to get everybody at the table to address this problem because uh, come next year we're going to be uh, we're only faced with one solution if Springfield doesn't act and so far they have no, shown no real inclination to act then we are going to be uh, faced with doubling our property taxes unless we come up with new revenue sources. Uh, some of us on the Progressive Caucus have talked about a transactional tax, uh, sweeping the TIFs, uh, uh, creating a fair, a fair tax across this uh, state. Uh, and if we don't do it now, uh, waiting till October, November, December is going to be way too late. Thank you, caller, for that yes, question. thank you. Uh, you brought up the TIF. Uh, I have a question. On, uh, I was reading somewhere about the, um, this takes us back to the summer where we're talking about school closings and 
you had some comments. Uh, the Progressive Caucus had some. Uh, I don't know if it was an ordinance or you talked about uh, made a recommendation about TIF well, using we had, TIF funding for yeah. uh, to help pay bills with CPS or something. Yes, we wanted each each TIF to be looked at yeah. uh, and to any surplus funds to go back to the um, uh, schools. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know there is a percentage that uh, has to go back to all the municipal bodies that uh, would have received money from the tax from a TIF and the city of Chicago would have received a lot of money too. So we need to find dedicated sources to deal with this, uh, as the caller said, a pension crisis. Uh, I may not say it's a crisis, but it has been created uh, to be such that it is, it is pulling down our bond rating across the board and the people of this city are feeling the effect because most of the payments that are going uh, into our property, oh, in fact, virtually every piece, uh, all the property taxes that you pay f that goes to the city of Chicago go into paying the pension. Wow. And so the question the caller had is, is it going to affect homeowners and their property taxes? Well, it will because they would have to come up. Um, we would we would almost be forced to uh, raising the property taxes. And in '07, when I voted against the budget the first time, uh, it was because there was a raise in the property tax, and I thought that type of a system. Uh, and we were just on the cusp of the beginning of foreclosures. Um, that at the year before, I think there was a little over 10,400 foreclosures, which were an awful lot in 06. But the first six months of 07, we had over 14,000 foreclosures. And I see property taxes, increased assessments, uh, really bearing on uh, our citizens and acting like a way to create more foreclosures. And what does that mean? People are gonna leave this city uh, they're going to. They're not going to have their children raised here. They're not going to enjoy the benefits of an urban living, uh, and I think this is a great city. There's a lot of potential here, but we've got to come together collectively and listen to the people of this city on what they want. And I think we can come up with solutions to deal with these problems. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, your question, please. Hi, Alderman. I know that the city council approved an independent um, office to um, analyze uh, the budget and just to give you all more information about that. Has that been implemented? I'm going to look at my watch right now. And uh, I don't even think they put out the request on who would run it yet. Uh, so the answer is no. Uh, and it's going to take a while for somebody to get up to speed running that type of an office. I mean, the budget, we're dealing with a $6 billion budget. What does a person look at? What will it, and will they be looking at the infrastructure trust? Will they be looking at all these bond deals? As you may be aware, uh, on February 5th of this year, we passed $1.9 billion, $1 billion in bonds. There was no discussion. I, I believe there were five of us that voted against it. Uh, and three to four hundred million were unaccounted for. I look back, that may have been money that they wanted to pay into the pension fund. But uh, given the winter that we had, the overtime that's happening, the overtime for police, fire, our streets and sand that's out there, uh, it's going to have to pay uh, go to paying overtime. And uh, so far, it has not been implemented. And uh, I am waiting to see what kind of an individual will run that, and hopefully they will be independent. But as you, if you look at the ordinance, it really responds to uh, the chairman of the budget committee and the chairman of the finance committee. And they have not been this, um, that independent over their years. Good. Thank you for that call, for that question, caller. Uh, you mentioned earlier before we got started that uh, clean and green is around the corner. And right. how important is that to the ward? Well, I think even before, after I was elected, but before being sworn in, we had our first cl uh, clean and green. Yes. And uh, I think, uh, I believe in having a clean ward. I believe in a graffiti-free ward. I believe in uh, uh, the taxpayers of this city and the residents of this city and the people that rent apartments of this city uh, pay some of the highest taxes in the world. We ought to have a clean city. But we do it by a partnership with government and with our citizens. And every year we get together. 
uh, I think it'll be right uh, around April 21st is what we're looking at, uh, that we put it together. We have um, people go out to various sites on both our parks, uh, our boulevards, our streets, and clean up. Um, and afterwards, we have maybe a barbecue or something else, or we have a party a little bit afterwards. But people get together, and they take pride in their community. And I think when you have pride in your community, you feel good about it. Uh, I walk down some of the streets in some of the wards, and I just see graffiti up and down and stickers up and down. And I'm wondering, does anybody care? I know people care, but they get so beaten up from half of the stuff all the time uh, that they feel like, oh, well, what can I do? But you know what? Come out, join us. Uh, call my office at 312-263-9273, and, uh, uh, and you s see the number up there. And join us for a clean and green. And if you don't live in the ward, let's start it in your own area. Great. Thank you again, caller, for the yes, questions. Yes, thank uh, you. And uh, we have another caller on the line. Please, your question. How are we doing, Alderman? I'm doing good. Thank you. That's good. I want to applaud you for your stance that you're taking as a vocal outcry for the issues in this city. And I want you to know I will be the first one in line in August to circulate your petition for mayor. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, I've heard a lot from people around the city, and because I think this expansive cutting up that now I'm representing not just two wards, but seven or eight wards, um, it's a tough decision. It's easy to run for mayor, but it's going to be tough to govern because of the problems that this administration uh, has has created. Uh, they say they're for reform, they but they pick at the edges. They say that they're helping to educate our students, but yet they're privatizing all of our schools. They say that they, they are out there for our employees, but they've yet to address our police and fire contracts. You know, the time is now on how you've got to look at writing the ship. And I think collectively we can all make a decision. Collectively we make a decision on, on to run for mayor. Collectively, or run for which award I, I run for as alderman. But with your help um, and, with, uh, and looking at everything that we do, I do appreciate what you're saying. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you, caller. I have a question that, for, that a caller left for us. Uh, to position Chicago as a leading example with STEM, education will we need to add more charter schools well stem is stands for and, and i think some of uh, the folks know science technology engineering and math um we have a new one just re right down the street down right off of taylor street here a block over uh, the question is uh, do charter schools are they fundamentally different have they shown the amount of improvement? So far, when I look at the numbers, they don't. We, when I talk about the 18,000 homeless kids in our school system, we speak about 192 languages in our school system. We need to have the right management of our neighborhood schools. When you close 50 schools and now you come back to the people and say, oh, guess what, we're going to use this for a charter school, that's, that's fundamentally wrong. And uh, uh, I, I am looking at the whole charter aspect with, with some of my colleagues on whether we should be opening any of these schools and, and have a long-term moratorium till we get everything righted uh, with our neighborhood schools. Okay. Uh, I just see much. that sign that said one <laughs> minute left, and I yes. don't like it because I'm willing to take a lot more calls, and I know they're coming in. Well, so. well uh, thank you again. Uh, so uh, let's try to wrap it up for the one minute. Is there anything else you want to let us know about the ward, what you're most proud of that you've accomplished so far in the well, ward? And well, I, you know, and I, I appreciate the caller who just called in about yes. running for mayor because I think it's, it's we need to, to root out the corruption that we have in the city. I think we need to, uh, to deal with an ethical standard here in this city. I think we need to look at our educational base, how we bring jobs into this city, how we broaden our tax base, how we bring down the crime in this city and not fudge the numbers. I think uh, uh, the people of this city, if we want to listen to them, if we, the collective body, all, and we try to because we have regular town hall meetings, have the solutions on how we deal with the problems of this city because I have faith in our residents in this city.
Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being our guest uh, this evening. And thank you to Steve, our, our phone technician. Thank you. Thank you very much.